All right, in this video, this is video number three of the absolute value math tutorial series. And here we're gonna look at basic absolute value equations. This is a little bit different than the video number one because video number one, we covered the ideas of very basic in terms of just letting X be inside of the absolute value. This example right here, it says the absolute value of X needs to be equal to seven. And if you watch that video, the only thing that X could be was a positive seven or a negative seven, because if we take the absolute value of either one of those numbers, we do get a positive seven. It's the same concept, but now you have to be a little bit careful because we're gonna get two different numbers here. They're not gonna be opposites of each other. Let's take a look at this first equation here. The absolute value of something minus two is equal to six. So we're talking about everything inside of this blue rectangle here. Everything inside of that blue rectangle, the absolute value of all that stuff is equal to six. That means this entire blue rectangle can be one of two things. It can either be equal to a positive six or it can be equal to a negative six. Because when you take the absolute value of six or the absolute value of negative six, you do get a positive six there. So we take this blue rectangle here, x minus two, and we set it equal to six. Then we take x minus two and we set it equal to a negative six. We will get two different numbers here that are not opposites of each other. That's what makes this video here a little bit different than video number one. Let's add two to both sides to get x by itself in this first equation. The twos cancel out and we have x is equal to eight. There's our first answer for x. Let's go ahead and solve the second equation as well, adding two to both sides again. The two still cancel, but be careful with your signs here. Negative six plus two is negative four. Now let's go back and check to make sure both of these answers work. So our first answer, x is equal to eight. Let's plug that eight in right there. Eight minus two is six, and the absolute value of six is equal to six. Now let's do the same thing with negative four. X is equal to negative four. Let's plug it in. Negative four minus two is negative six, and the absolute value of negative six is equal to a positive six. So yes, both of these answers do work. Now this example here, very similar. We're taking this stuff here. The absolute value of two X plus six needs to be equal to 20. We take this stuff and we set it equal to a positive 20 and we set it equal to a negative 20. And you're probably going to build that habit of automatically doing that and that's fine. But when we get to this third example in a minute, you gotta be careful. Don't jump the gun so fast. But anyway, back to this one, we do take all of this stuff, two X plus six, let's set it equal to 20 and then let's take two X plus six and set it equal to a negative 20. Let's solve both of these equations. I'm gonna subtract six from both sides. The six is canceled. We have two X left over here and this is now equal to 14 since 20 minus six is 14. Now let's divide both sides by two. The twos cancel out over here and we have X is equal to seven. That is one of our answers. Now let's repeat this process, the same algebra, the same inverse operations, but notice our answer is gonna be completely different here. Subtracting six from both sides, we have two X is equal to a negative 26. Negative 20 minus six more is a negative 26. Divide both sides by two, two's canceling out, very similar, but now we have X is equal to a negative 13. Negative 26 divided by two is a negative 13. Now let's go in and let's check both of these to make sure they work. X equals seven, plugging in seven right there. Two times seven is 14. 14 plus six gives you 20, and the absolute value of 20 is 20. Very good. Now let's double check the negative 13. Let's plug in negative 13 right here. 2 times negative 13 is negative 26, and negative 26 plus 6 is a negative 20. But the absolute value of negative 20 is equal to a positive 20. So as you can see there, we are getting two answers that work in this equation as well. Now, like I said, here and here, we're doing the same concept. We're taking this stuff and we're setting it equal to the positive number and the negative number. Notice the 6 and the negative 6. 
don't jump the gun so fast. And the reason why is if you look at this third example here, we're taking the absolute value of this stuff and we want it to be equal to a negative seven. That's not going to happen. That is impossible because whenever you take the absolute value of this stuff, you always end up with a positive answer. Therefore, it is impossible for the absolute value of x plus one to be equal to a negative number. That may be confusing because you're thinking, well, we said it could be a negative here and a negative here. But the thing is, that negative number showed up inside of this stuff. And when you take the absolute value of a negative number, you will end up with a positive answer, always. So notice now, this negative number is outside the absolute value. It is impossible for the absolute value of anything to be equal to a negative number. Therefore, our answer for this problem here is no solution. And there you have it, three basic absolute value equations. You will build this habit of creating two equations each time you are solving these things. But again, don't jump the gun. Make sure that when you take the absolute value of something, it's gotta be equal to a positive number. And since this one was equal to a negative, it don't make sense. Therefore, we have no solution. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.